How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a great Friday and start to the weekend. And today we're going to be summoning all of my sacred shards and hope for a new legendary. But most importantly, we've got the fusion summon rush for Eastrid Dream Song. Um, let me know in the comment section below, by the way, how many of you are actually pushing for this champion and how's your fusion setting out to be so far? I will be breaking down my fusion plan and what I've completed so far. And I think there's one event that I can skip and I think it's going to be the champion training event because it's something that I despise all of the time. I don't know why. It's probably just my least favorite thing to participate in. But yeah, we are going to be going for the summon rush, which is 3,150 points. And we've also got a 10x event for Falmond, right? Um, is that his name? I can't remember. Um, this dude. Yeah, Falmond Mournsword from the Sacred Order. And he's actually the first unity champion from this faction. Now, I must admit, my champions from this faction are not crazy. Um, so if we just go in here. Like, I haven't really got any of the top meta champions for Arena, per se. Like, no Cardiels, no Venus or Cupidus. I don't have a Martyr. Um, High Mother Maud will probably get over time. But it's going to take a very long time since we get that. And, you know, I don't have the Constantine either. Or, like, Vitreus. Which I'm not too sure. Is he even good? He looks very similar to Falmont. But we're just out without the helmet, right? But overall, this champion is pretty top tier, right? Once you start scaling this unity, it becomes immune to cooldown increasing effects. While all allies, that's pretty bonkers, right? Um, revive on death buff for one turn on an ally whenever their HP drops below 50%. Okay. And then decrease the damage taken by this champion by 10% for each turn taken by an ally or an enemy before this champion's next turn. And I believe that Saf from HH Gaming was mentioning to me that he's like um, a nuking version of Ultimate Death Knight. Because if you can get him in stone skin, let all of these allies and enemies take a turn to optimize that damage. He can actually hit like an absolute truck. So it'll be something really cool to test out, I guess. Even if I can't scale the unity at the moment, just to be able to utilize this passive and see how much damage we can get out of this one here. Um, should be pretty fun, to say the least. But it is only a 10x event, and I don't really get lucky with those. But let me know in the comments, which kind of champions did you pull for this 2x event if pushing for this fusion? So I guess the first thing I want to do is go through the fusion plan. So let's just bring that up. And also stay tuned towards the end of the video, um, because I am going to be breaking down the new fusion skills for the Vault Keeper Wixwell, which I believe there was a leak. And then Raid was just like, there you go. Um, here's all the skills you could speak about it with your communities. So we're going to be breaking it down and the ones that I'm going to be voting on for each of the time periods, which should be pretty interesting. I saved my first reactions for this video. Um, so, okay, Eastrid Dream Song. What have we done so far? Well, pretty much everything. Um, all of the events and tournaments that we've had so far, there is a little green tick on the board because we've completed those. Now, you can see here I've got a bit of a red theme going on right here for the champion training. And that's because if I just move myself out of the way very briefly... Uh, there's actually a 10 fragment leeway even without being top placement of leaderboards. And that means that we can skip one of these events, right? And champion training is something that I did used to love, honestly. But I've got to a place after five years where I'm just ranking up champions for the sake of it. Or like taking four stars to like level 20 and then making five stars and stuff. And it's just very tedious for myself. So I might actually skip this one. And then just go for the summon rush and then go for these. And these will be the final fragments that I need. Or some terrible painting here. My gosh. Um, to get that done. Like if we just bring this off now. And we go into my fusion and see how much we've got. We have got fragment fusion. 65 fragments. So we're going to get 15 today from the summon rush. Which will put us up to 80. Plus the final 20 of those final four events. And we will have our hands on Eastrid Dream Song. I actually think it's going to make a drastic change to my account, guys. Now, at first, I was like, she's a cool champ. You know, definitely someone that entices me because I don't have champions such as Necmo far. She comes through with increased speed, increased attack, right? Turn meter fills, decreased speed, weakens, AoE attacks, turn meter depletions, sleep A1, which I don't really care about, and then also a speed and arena aura. But the main thing is just these two abilities is definitely going into one of my Hydra teams. Because when you consider AoE Weaken, you know you got like three Hydra teams, right? You need Weaken in pretty much all of them if you're trying to amplify your damage. And once you start removing Lydia and... Um, what's the name? 
um, loot from the equation on my account anyway. There's not really any other alternatives that I want to push for. So definitely going for this. And who would we be going for today? I would say always the Necmofars, the Lady Kimmies. But there's also a Thorion, um, the Max HP champion, the new one. And then of course the 10x champion in Falmont, which is the reason why I'm summoning today pretty much. So I guess let's get straight into it. I feel like just opening up with a Primal, or should I save it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually on a fresh Mercy. Um, so if we pull a Legendary, then we pull a Legendary, right? Just happy days. The main thing is just the Summon Rush. Come on, bring it home. All right, so we got Alaric the Hooded. I actually never know what this guy does. What is it? Two random buffs from a target. Any Alaric the Hooded fans out there? He looks pretty cool, though. He does look pretty cool. All right, I seen a bit of a lag there. Karam, one of the OG poison detonators. Let's go. Five more to get through. Can we proc at least one today? Here we go. Bring home the Falmans. Lord Shazar. Okay, Lord Shazar. What do I think about this? I think Dupe City. We've already got Lord Shazar, guys. Um, he's a great bomb champion, to be fair. Like, I still see him being used in many um, live arena battles that I face. Off topic pick, ramp up his attack and deal his bomb damage. Um. I don't know. How's my Demon Spawn looking in terms of my Faction Guardians? Um, if we just go in here, go into Demon Spawn. Oh, wait. Is this the final one we need? There we go. Okay. Well, happy days. We've now got 10 extra speed. So I guess in hindsight, that's actually a big game changer for my account in terms of Faction Guardians, right? All right. Come on. We're looking for another one. We want a non-duplicate here. I never proc the 10x events. Never. Come on. Another epic champion, and we got a, a budget Draco Morph. Two more to get through. And we've actually got the Kalamboss to claim as well, so we might get another sacred. Um, Captain Tamiya. Looks very similar to Painkeeper, right? Who I pulled on the free to play. Ooh, epic champion again, and we got a Claude Beast Feeder. One of the best increased speed slash. Um, is it decreased crit rate? This is actually very powerful for the Demon Lord Kalamboss. Okay, um, let's just quickly go into my Kalamboss now. Let's see if we can pick up one extra sacred here. Come on. Okay. Ancient Shard. All right, Nightmare, it's all down to you. Bring it home. We actually do get a fair bit of sacred sometimes, but it just never proc today. Just didn't proc. All right, do you know what I'm going to do? Just for you guys, we're going to do a Primal Shard. I know that I usually wait for the 2x. I am dying for a Mythical Champion. I still don't have one. Ah, oh, there's my mythical. <laughs> Risk arm. Break my arm. <laughs> More likely. I don't want to click another summon for the next week or so. Well, I guess it didn't go too bad, right? We was on a fresh mercy. We did get a legendary and we've now maxed up our faction guardians. And the main thing is we're now on track to complete this fusion by a long margin. So let's just claim up all of these goodies to add to the account. Nice. I actually need a bit of energy. Like if you look at my gems up here, we are falling a bit short. I actually had a screenshot that I put in my Discord, which feel free to join, by the way, um, if you want to come by and join the community. It's a lot of fun. Um, I posted an image of eight gems on my account, and I was like, damn, that dragon and slash back-to-back -back dungeon divers was horrific. Um, anything else here that we can speak about? Well, Ice Golem starting tomorrow. Okay. Um, Classic Arena tomorrow as well. And then the dungeon divers at the same time. So we're going to be double dipping our points. We'll do that. We could pretty much get everything done tomorrow if we just use all of this energy which I've got stacked here, which is probably going to be the play. Definitely going to be the play. All right, so we've now pulled up the skills, and I believe that there was a leak in the community somewhere, and then it was just like, here you go, look at all the skills, and now we can actually plan ahead and see which ways we really want to be voting in this system. So the first one I'm going to focus on is the default skill, and I believe that the first one that they revealed, was it the A3? It was like that new intercept buff, right? Which I'm going to break down exactly what that does from the notes I've got on the side. But on this one, we got a damage focus of attacks one enemy two times with a 25% chance of granting an extra turn. Now, the one thing that we can't see is cooldowns or book values in terms of extra damage or any kind of multipliers. So that's a pure gamble on how hard that's going to be for a default. But overall, extra turn mechanic, you know, could be pretty cool. Um, defense focus attacks one enemy two times, with each having a 40% chance of placing Provoke. Okay. 
If the target is a boss, this chance will increase to 80%. Wowza, okay. Now that's actually pretty nice. Like, think about the head of decay in the Hydra boss for anyone that's struggling on a consistent provoke without cycling three turn cooldowns on an active ability, such as a Vizigstan boat. You know, that could definitely fit into those teams or the Magma Dragon or whatever that may be. Like, it definitely has its niche places to be used. I just, I'm just wary of, is this going to go to a 100% chance? If it does, that could be very powerful. That could be very powerful for many players out there. Um, support focus attacks one enemy two times, and each has a 50% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns. Okay. So, a nice poison A1, you know, think about Demon Lord Clan boss or progression in Dragon, whatever that may be, could definitely have some use. I would say for me, um, defense focus is the one that I'm kind of leaning towards at the moment. It might change as we flip through these skills here. Let's have a look. Um, so stage two. Well, actually, when's this one going to be? So the voting stage is at the bottom. So April 18th, 11 UTC, and we'll end on the 22nd. Um, this one's on April 15th. So skills two. Attacks all enemies before attacking will place an increased attack buff on this champion. Okay, that's sounding good so far. The damage inflicted with this skill increases by 5% for each buff on the target. If there are no buffs on the target, but ignore 25% of the target's defense instead. Okay, that, that's actually sounding pretty, sounding pretty powerful, guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, wait, let me just, I need to think of some comparisons here. Like, there's two that screams to mind. I think Xena Warrior Princess, that exclusive champion. Is it her? But ignore 5% of the target's defense for each buff on the target. Okay, so it's a little bit, some similarities. I think the main one is King Garrog. The King Garrog? But he doesn't place increased attack on himself, I don't think. But attacks all enemies but ignore 20% of the target's defense and ignores a further 5% defense for each buff on the target. So it's a little bit different, I guess, in hindsight. But overall, that does sound like a pretty nice one. But once again, we don't know the multipliers on this, so it would be a gamble. Um, really selecting this and putting all our eggs in one basket. We'll see. Like, it does sound pretty nice though. Um, defense focus attacks all enemies with a 100% chance of placing a decreased attack. Okay. And also increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. So we've got a buff extension decreased attack option. That's nice. Then increases the value of all shields and all allies. The value of the shield is increased proportional to the number of buffs which had their duration increased. Okay. So I wonder if he's going to be placing a shield. I can't recall it. Um, we'll have a look in a second. That's, that's really nice. Like, there's not many champions that can increase the value of the shields, right? Think about Underpriest Brogni's, for instance. So the number of buffs which had their duration increased. So let's just say you've got um, a team of six in the Hydra. The value could be pretty nice, right? It could be pretty nice, but a decreased attack in the same ability. I'm a fan of this one. I don't know, I feel like I just lean towards defensive-based champions anyway. So maybe I'm a little bit biased and you guys are looking for a top-tier damage dealer and you might want the damage focus one. But let me know, guys. Um, support focus has a chance of placing a poison sensitivity as well as instantly activating any poison debuffs on enemies and heals all allies by 20% of this champion's max HP. Okay, so we've got a bit of a poison explosion on our hands, right? Think about champions such as Elenaru and Xavius. There's not a ton of poison exploders in the game, especially AoE. So for players progressing, I think it kind of falls off once you go into the hard mode variation of dungeons because you can't poison the Ice Golem anymore. And, you know, you might just have other strategies for the hard mode of the Dragon to speed that up. In the grand scheme of things for progression, and you're looking for an exploder, uh, maybe there is some players that's really valuing this. Like for me personally... I banked on Poison Explosion for years. Um, I still uh, sometimes do it on my Ice Golem team. So, you know, not too bad coming out of support focus. So skill free, attacks one enemy and ignores stone skin. If this attack kills the target, will fill this champion's turn meter by 50% on a skill free ability. So to me, this has to be screaming out money scaling, like the best damage ability in this kit. Um, attacks one enemy, ignores stone skin. No ignore defense. Um, don't get me wrong. This could be potentially a big damage ability. Who else ignores stone skin? Is it, is it Georgit? Let me have a quick look. Is it? No, it could be. Is it Mesomol Lupafang? See, when you compare it to something like this, like ignore stone skin, strength and ally protection, shields and block revives the target on a three turn cooldown. Of course, being a mythical champion, 
We could just see how that's a lot better. And we don't class Mezamel as top tier. She's great. It's probably one of my most wanted mythicals. But if I'm just being non-biased, I think she's just like a decent champion, right? I've seen her used a few times. But that's a very strong ability coming up from a average per se mythical champion. Um, orcs. Um, they're not orcs, is it? Um, doo -doo -doo. Where is he? George it. I think it's him. But ignore strength and stone skin and killable block damage, increased defense, ally protection and shield, grants an extra turn as well. So, you know, there is other champions, of course, granted they're void legendaries and mythical champions. But I just feel like this needs a little bit of an extra oomph for me, personally. But I could be wrong. I just feel like you should be ignoring a little bit more or ignoring a percentage of defense, especially being a single target, personally. And then with the defense focus, you'll place two intercept stacks on a target ally. So that's interesting. A new buff coming into the game. As well as placing a 60% increased defense and a shield buff on all allies for two turns. And the value of this shield is proportional to this champion's defense. Now, when you start thinking about a champion such as Valkyrie, you know, very big shields. The scalability factor, the more that he can scale his defense. As well as placing increased defense and a new buff. And just to break down very briefly what it does... So it says that the intercept buff will block any attempt to place any crowd controlling effect on a champion, even if it is specified in the enemy skills that the debuff itself cannot be blocked. So that's very interesting. This includes stun, sleep, freeze, provoke, fears, true fears, petrification, and sheep debuffs. Now, just for some examples here, I'm in the Hydra boss with my Feral the Barkhorn, and he's placing those perfect veil buffs on my team. You know, he's still available to get feared from the Head of Torment. So maybe placing this intercept on my position champion that's not under Veil could be really cool to just keep him in rotation, right? Could be pretty cool. Thinking of some other ways you can use this. Maybe in the clan boss, determining your stun targets if you don't want to get stunned. Of course, you could just use the block debuff spot. I'm pretty sure there's going to be many nifty ways to utilize intercept. And I'm sure that in the future at some point, there will be a mythical champion saying intercept on all allies or something like that. But it's a new introductory um, skill to the game, which is interesting to me. Um, support focus revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 50% turn meter, as well as placing a 5% poison debuff on all enemies for two turns. Okay. And then the number of poison debuffs placed on each target is equal to the number of allies revived. So it's a nice revivability. I guess it just really comes down to if you're valuing needing more revives on your teams. Like for me, the defense one's just screaming out again. In all of them, pretty much. I think I like this one. And it's all about synergy to me. Like you don't have like one hitting some weird damage and then the other one is all based on defense. And this one you might need attack for, whatever that may be. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't want to go like increase attack and then this one's placing increased defense. Yeah, I feel like I'm just defense focused all around the board so far. Let's see what the passive skill is saying. So, prevents this champion's death, so a preempting of hit, very similar to Godseeker and Ares, and like Leorius, for instance. Um, keeps him alive on 1 HP when hit with a fatal hit, and then will counterattack. If the counterattack kills the attacker, will fully heal this champion. If the counterattack doesn't kill the attacker, revive this champion instead, or kills him. Okay. Defense focus at the start of each round will place a counterattack buff on his champion. For one turn, this buff cannot be removed. And then at the end of this champion's turn, we'll place a counterattack buff on them for one turn. So you can maybe use this as a mischief tanking in the Hydra boss at the start of each round. Get that extra buff that you need. Or even in the Demon Lord clan boss. What was the A1 here? Well, that's a provoke. Which one had the poison on it? I believe there was a poison. Was there a poison A1? Yeah, here. So maybe you can go like counterattack, lead into the 5% poison. That could be a cool one if you're not really banking on that provoke. So it really depends on how you want to vote for this. Like for me, I'd be leaning towards the maybe the provoke for the for the Hydra, but maybe we're sleeping on support focus here. Because if you could place the counterattack on himself, if you don't have an AoE counterattack champion currently, lead him with these poisons consistently on that um, clan boss. And it attacks two times with the each hit placement. That could be a lot of poison stacks. A lot. So even in like unkillable teams, could be a very viable poisoner champion. If you blend those um, skills together, right? With the mix and match. Something to pay note to, I guess. Um, allies deal 5% more damage for each poison debuff on the target. And will stack up to 30%. Okay. 
And if you think about champions such as Bad El Kazar, they do it with a passive, but it's just against any targets under poisons, right? But a stack up to 30%, this could lead to some nice damage if you really can scale this. How much is that? 10, 20, 30. So you need six stacks of poisons to really ramp this up. Could be doable. Decrease defense, weaken. Six stacks of poisons. You just have to be wary of not ramping up that debuff bar so everything else falls off, right? Or maybe just bringing in a debuff extender like Vizito Velis. But let me know, guys, which ways are you going to be voting in terms of the May Fusion skills um, for the um, Vault Keeper Wixwell? For me personally, I'm actually leaning towards the A1 of support focus. Or the defense focus. Either of the two I'll be fine with. But that's because I've got many provoked champions. But for players out there that love the provokes, you might want to go defense focus here. Intercept probably. Decrease attack. I love that shield synergy. I think if you're going to go with this one, you have to go with this one because this increases the value of the A3. So it's just that synergy thing once again. It needs to make sense, right? It just needs to make sense. But the only one I'd blend is that A1 with the passive ability of the support. All right, guys, we're rambling on too much. <laughs> Didn't want to speak too much about Wicksteed's um, skills, the Vault Keeper. Um, we are going to be doing a dedicated video on the latest champion in, um, was it the daily login one, right? Where is she? The Adeline Chase. So I'm going to give my full thoughts on her in a future video. Not going to do it right now. Am I a little bit underwhelmed? Yes, <laughs> I am. There's definitely some changes I will be wanting to make to this champion hypothetically. And I'll break that all down in that future video. But yeah, have an amazing rest of your weekend, guys. Let me know what champions you pulled for your 2x sacreds, and I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.